We humans are also nature beings, uh, and we can't live without nature. But we have forgotten, so maybe the elves can help us remember. My name is Ragnhildur Jónsdóttir. Uh, I was born here in Hafnafjörður, and I live here now in Iceland. Even live in the same house as I was born in. <laughs> well, here uh, we are in Hellesgerði Park in Hafnafjörður, and so since I lived here, just across the street, I I played with the elves and Hildefolk here in the park, but also with lots of human children. Uh, and at home, um, since they were invited into my home, the elves and Hildefolk, they they were there too. So they're everywhere. I've always been in contact with elves and well, angels and other beings and so it's kind of hard for me to not believe in their existence. Um, although I went through that period in my life where I doubted everything so I went to see a doctor and asked him what was the difference between uh, being ill, you know, seeing things and hearing things that no one else around me could see. And after a, a long talk and questions and tests and things, he said that I was very sane, that I was okay. <laughs> so I decided to believe that. So that means that, yeah, they exist. And what does it mean that you've always been in contact with them? Um, I don't remember anything else than being, than having uh, elves or other spirits or you know, beings of not uh, material flesh, <laughs> uh, having them for friends. So the old story is probably what my mother told me when I was two years old. Um, we were coming home, and she closed the door, the front door of the house behind us. And um, then I started crying and I said, no, mom, pull this outside, pull this outside. <laughs> so my mother opened the door to let someone in that she could not see. And uh, I became happy again and started talking with Pulta. And Pulta uh, is still my friend. And I found out uh, when we were older that she is uh, of a species we call Hultefolk or hidden people. They are not elves, not humans, uh, but they live in the elf world. They're very similar to us humans. So, yeah, I don't remember anything but having invisible friends. Mm. So how did it how did it work growing up? Like when you started to realize that you were seeing what other people weren't seeing and had them as your friends. Well, there comes a time, you know, when you realize that um, people start making faces when you start talking about Pulta or someone that they don't see. So I just learned to keep quiet about it. And I think that's what usually happens. But I myself always kept contact, you know, when I was alone or... Uh, and I practiced uh, telepathy. For some reason, uh, some call it coincidence, a book fell in, into my arms, so you could say, about telepathy, and I, I read it cover to cover and studied how to do that, and so I could keep on talking with my friends without anyone else knowing. <laughs> they know naturally how to do telepathy, or? Yeah, it seems. That's a, yeah. I, but not all elves or beings want to be um, friends with humans. I mean, they are dif different between themselves as we are, all kinds of characters, but uh, yeah, I have several friends there that uh, think it's easy to talk that way. And do they see us as little as we see them? Like, do they have to be, um, have special talents to be able to communicate with us? I think most of the beings in 
the elf world uh, can see us. But because we are uh, our uh, material or our flesh <laughs> is so uh, rough for for some of them, they think it's grotesque. <laughs> And um, so it, it's maybe easier for them to see us because of that. Mm. It really depends on the being you're talking to. Uh, in what world do they live? So for uh, some... Uh, you, have to, you have to... I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. You have to tune in to the, the frequency. So for if you want to talk with a dark elves or demons of sort which of course we don't want to talk to really but then you would have to find something dark within yourself to, to talk to them to go to that place but for higher beings uh, higher energy beings like or angels you have to find your highest self to talk to them and all the other beings in between it's like with the old FM radios you have to tune into the right frequency mm, sounds difficult explain it it's difficult but uh, if you just do it you don't think about it it's like with speaking if you try to explain how you speak yeah then you have to explain well yeah it's very technical yeah <laughs> but it comes naturally yeah so has this um, tuning in always come naturally to you or did you have to practice at it it became it well I don't like I said I don't remember how it started so for some reason I always could do some things of that but then I started practicing willingly you could say how to communicate in more than one frequency at the same time so that I could be walking talking with humans in, uh, in flesh <laughs> but also be talking on other frequencies uh, one or two other at the same time if needed are you doing that now I, yeah, I usually do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's just very interesting. Mm -hmm. When you were um, when you were going through the period you mentioned before of questioning, did you ever like start to do research or reach out to people who also have had similar experiences to you? Yeah, yes. I think that's a natural thing to do. And maybe it's good to question oneself now and then just to make sure um, you're comfortable with what you're doing <laughs> and I guess I had to go through this to to make the decision within myself that this is who I am um, and I studied healing and I worked as a healer for some years and channeler and you know reading cards and crystals and things and and um, yeah, for me it was like science study that I found out that I, uh, this is something I, I cannot deny. And another thought was that if this is crazy, it's at least much more fun than a square life that people try to uh, convince me is normal. <laughs> <laughs> so why not? I'm not harming anyone. Yeah. Have you ever met anyone or do you have friends who um, have the same experience and knowledge as you? Yes, fortunately I met many people that have seen the uh, same beings or experienced the same kind of things so um, I think that's also <laughs> something we need to <laughs> experience um, and people from all over the world that come here in Hedleskater Park and, and, uh, and we can see the same things and talk about the same being that we're talking to that's it's also it's yeah good for the soul <laughs> so you've had the experience where you're doing a tour and someone is seeing the same thing yes sometimes we see exactly the same thing same being um, sometimes it's like someone asked me you know is there by any chance a being that looks like this and that and then I can show them a picture that we made in the book and uh, it's always a good confirmation for everyone, I think. Um, because the world today tries to convince us that we're crazy. Wow.
why do you think that is that the world does that? It doesn't fit in the um, in Excel. <laughs> I'm sorry? In Excel. It doesn't fit in the squares or the things that we... We always try to put things into boxes. I mean, it's natural for humans to do that because we want to be able to understand. But some things just don't fit in these boxes. And um, the elves always laugh when I talk about boxes because yeah. what is that box humans are always talking about? Um, because life life doesn't fit in a box uh, there are so many things invisible if we think about it uh, love is invisible most of us thank goodness believe in love uh, many people believe in god many have seen god or angels and many believe in god and have not seen um, but we see sometimes result of prayers, result of you, th you send someone a good thought um, or healing energy or, or prayers and we see the result even though we can't see the prayer itself or the being we are praying to. Um, there's also something that everyone I think experiences and maybe don't think about and that's uh, If you think about some, someone you haven't met in years, all of a sudden the thought of this person comes into your mind and then they call you or you meet them in the street. It's something invisible energy that happens before. And what is that? But we all know, we, we have all experienced this. Um, and there's also, like I say in the, in the elf walk, about uh, invisibility or magic. Uh, when we send, when we take pictures or even moving pictures and send them invisibly through the air all over the world and this happens every day all around the world and, and we don't think about it. I mean, it's just the television or computer that we turn on wherever we get electricity, which is also invisible until you see the result of turning on the computer <laughs> or the light. So there are so many invisible things uh, in our lives that we don't think about. And the cell phones, no one thinks about that as magic anymore. But, yeah, so. I, heard, um, I heard that elves and hidden people don't like cell phones. Yeah, I think um, elves and hiltafolk and dwarves, there are so many. Uh, of each species. Uh, they all have different characters, just like we humans. Um, so some of them don't like any of the technology that we have. And it of course interrupts the energy sometimes if it's too much of it. So I'm sure there are many of them that don't like that. But sometimes they use the the cell phones, they use the computers, they use the, uh, the cameras to show themselves. So, to show themselves? Yeah, like when you take a photo and all of a sudden there's an elf in the photo or light or energy because they, they want to show themselves. Mm. So that's happened where people have taken photos and they find an elf? And like on our Facebook page, I have several photos. You know, sometimes it's uh, the reflection of the sun's rays and they want to show us something. Uh, they use the reflection of the sun. But sometimes it's uh, in the form of a being and you can deny it. I've shown pictures like that to many photographers that, you know, you, you, you can't deny that. It's not like typical reflection. So, but even if someone calls it a damage in the photo, I, yeah. <laughs> so sad <laughs> to miss out the magic. <laughs> Do you think there's something about Iceland or the Icelandic population that allows for a greater openness beyond these boxes? Yeah, I've thought about that because there are elves and dwarves in all countries, everywhere where nature is uh, undamaged 
they are nature beings. In every park, in every city, all around the world, there are some kind of nature beings with the trees or wherever. And, uh, and there are stories in every country also. Every culture has old stories of some kind of nature beings. We call them by different names, of course. We have different languages and different experiences. Uh, but it's amazing that how some of the stories are alike between very different uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. But with Iceland, I think um, most of the country is nature. And uh, nature here is so alive. It's like, um, I mean, we can't get away from it if we, if we try. <laughs> we have the, the weather constantly changing. We have the uh, earthquakes and volcano eruptions. So we know that nature is alive. Um, but also, uh, when Icelanders took up Christianity in the year 1000, it was really a political decision because the Norwegian king was Christian. Uh, before that, there were two faiths in the country, two religions, Christianity and uh, the old Norse heathen faith. Uh, when the decision was made, it was, okay, we take up Christianity, but we are allowed to talk to the old gods in secrecy. So there was never this, um, this fight, uh, sort of killing the old gods or the nature spirits. So we could always talk to them, and we still do. Maybe that works. <laughs> um, during an elf walk, at one time I was talking about the, the elf church here in the park. And then afterwards this woman told me that it was an Icelandic woman, that her father had been a priest. Some years ago he was uh, out in the country and he said that every Sunday after uh, making the sermon or, or uh, preaching for the humans, he always went out into the lava field to make a sermon for the elves and Hultfolk. Uh, and he did this every Sunday, and he told people that there were always m uh, so many more <laughs> uh, attending the sermon in the lava field than in the church. So many elves and Hiltefolk that wanted to listen to him and sing with him. Um, I thought that was, yeah, maybe important thought to keep in mind. Um, there was this. Christian man that was uh, interviewing me about uh, the elf churches and the, the way the elves and Hildefolk look at uh, faith and the thing is that they don't talk about religion, the elves, they don't talk about religion as we do, but they talk about the faith in the heart. Christian man, he asked me, um, well, or he said, with this look in his face. There is no mention of elves in the Bible. And I said, I know, but there is no mention of cats either. <laughs> and I have five cats and I do believe in that they exist. Yeah. So. <laughs> but there is a mention of giants and dragons in the Bible. Is there? Yes, and there is a mention of the third world and the uh, or third heaven and the seventh heaven, some things that are never explained. Mm -hmm. And I've read this again and again, the Bible, and then there is nothing that says they don't exist. Mm -hmm. And if God created everything, He created the elves. Yes. Yeah. But the Friends of the Lava, uh, do you want to talk about that? The, yeah. the protest? Or? I, I just about the organization and the protest, who's involved. Uh, the Friends of the Lava, Reina uh, Vinir, they've been uh, a group of people for several years that have been um, uh, protecting or um, the lava fields around this area, around the, the capital area. Um, They've written letters, they've written uh, protests, and and in us groups uh, 
have been into the lava fields to clean out things that, you know, garbage and things that people leave there. Um, but in 2013, all of a sudden, uh, we had to go into a physical protest by standing in the lava field in, in front of the bulldozers. Gardabayr and the road administration and they didn't listen to any written letters or friendly um, comments <laughs> so we had to stand there and protest well that ended up in uh, the one morning the police came there there were 60 policemen and so the yeah we were arrested and uh, put to prison for a few hours and then charged with not obeying the police. That was taken to uh, district court and we we took it to the Supreme Court and nine of us are now you could say criminals, convicted criminals <laughs> for not obeying the police. We didn't stand up, we sat in the lava, we didn't stand up and they told us to stand up uh, because we wanted to protect this lava field but they made the road through the field but uh, uh, we elves continued talking with uh, the mayor of Karlbayr and the road administration and they decided to save the elf church in the area and narrow the road where, uh, where it passes the church and they also moved um, a big boulder that is a um, uh, you could call it an elf chapel um, and put it down right next to the big elf church. So they're making this, um, they're protecting this sacred place for the elves. And what happens to the elves who had been living there? Um, some of the elves, especially those with uh, families with children, they moved away before the road was ever before this, the humans started to make the road. Uh, some moved away while the road work was being done. Lots of uh, explosions and things. That's really scary. Uh, some of them moved here into this park or to other areas. Um, how many beings would you guess are living here? I have no idea. It depends on uh, on what level you start counting. Do you count all the flower fairies and tree fairies? That would be millions of millions. <laughs> or the higher elves and then where is the difference between a higher yeah. elf being and a lower, I don't know. <laughs> but there are many, many, many beings here. Yeah. And, and many types of beings also here. Yeah. In the yeah. Uh, all of us uh, try to find words to describe. I mean, there is no... Uh, dictionary or yeah. <laughs> science book that says you know this is this type of elf and this is this type of hilt folk uh, so we all call them by different names uh, that doesn't matter you know it's just us trying to describe growing up did you hear stories about like any folk tales about elves and hidden people yeah I think I think everyone in Iceland yeah. hears those stories. It's part of who we are, it's part of our culture. Like for instance, uh, if you lose something in your home, you blame it on the house self. <laughs> mm -hmm. But sometimes it's, uh, it, it looks more obvious that it is the house self or the folk that borrowed things. Because uh, for instance, if you lose um, like my grandmother lost uh, her scissors and she was very Christian she went to church every Sunday she was what you would say yeah, very much a practicing Christian um, and she lost her scissors and they were lost for several weeks and then she needed them again and asked the house elf to put it back where it should be and it, the next day scissors were there and 
this is not just my grandma. I mean, there's uh, many, many, many stories like this. All, all of a sudden, things appear in the middle of a table that people have been using for weeks, and you know it wasn't there. So that's just, just common stories in Iceland. Stories like this, or uh, someone calls you to stop the car, and you see someone standing in the out in the field and calls you and you stop the car and go there. There is no human there or you don't see any elf anymore, but there is a sheep in trouble and you can help the sheep get out of a ditch or something. So they're, they're always there trying to, to help and be friends with us. Or borrow things. <laughs> and do you see them everywhere you go or is, are there specific places where you definitely don't see them? Um, in most places there is something uh, or someone to be seen. I, I've tried to I've practiced closing uh, closing myself down a little bit because otherwise it's very hard to go to uh, the grocery store, you know, theater, wherever, downtown, um, where there are many people. So I, tr I try to close it down a little bit sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, because every human being has someone Mom, with them. So if you see Clara. 10 people, 10 humans, there might be 50 beings. <laughs> like their own beings? Yeah, they have, you know, everyone has a spirit guide or someone. Huh. You see a spirit guide for me? Yes. I try not to look, you know, I try not to see but yeah they're there helping you with your project helping you staying safe and um, since you're into this kind of work you have more spirit guides than people who are uh, more physically minded you know not thinking of spiritual things so they're closer to people that um, yeah it's like you give out the, the energy of wanting to be in touch with them. <laughs> nice, it just, it's very interesting that it just really changes the way you feel to think in those terms. Like you're not alone. Or you're never alone. Yeah. And that there are things you can't see. Yeah. It really changes your whole, like everything that you're feeling. Yeah, and everything is alive and oh my god um and also i i tried once because i was very tired of all the all the spirits everything you know um, crowding me so i tried to just, uh, have myself closed down so i couldn't see anything or sense anything and it was very relaxing for a few hours and then I felt so alone. I have, <clears throat> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> so I broke through it again. <laughs> and yeah, and I never wanted that again. Do you think there's something that makes humans today naturally closed? Because most people, I think, well, maybe not most people, but a lot of people are. I, th uh, I think it's the way we live. I mean, we focus on things that are not real. We focus on materialistic things that only exist, you know, a short while, while the spirit exists forever. Uh, we focus on, you know, like money. What is that? It's just something that comes and goes. And we, it's like we're trying to close ourselves away from life, everything that is alive. People complaining about cut hair, or, you know. <laughs> so how did you start? Is, is this your full-time profession, the elf house and giving elf tours nowadays? It's what I do nowadays all day. Um, it's not a paid job, it's my... Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I want to connect between the worlds, mm -hmm. the elves. 
asked me to, and I said yes. I, at that time, I had no idea <laughs> what they had in mind, but yeah. So this is. So they kind of guided you into it. Yeah. Well, they just asked me, yeah. "Would you like to do this?" And I said, "Yeah." And then, it's, yeah, this has been growing. So they enjoy the tours as well. Yeah, I I only talk about the beings here that have given permission mm. to do so. So there are more beings who, who you don't communicate with in the park? Well, some of them I communicate with, but I'm not allowed to talk about them. At least not yet, maybe later. They want to maintain their privacy? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? Maybe with, like we humans, you know. We need our privacy sometimes. And yeah. Yeah. That's also why some of the beings have given their name and mm -hmm. not others. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can you tell me about some beings that you're particularly close with here? Yeah, like Frode, the author, <laughs> and um, my childhood friend Pulta. And um, um, yeah, there are several others that, uh, and Gutlberg, his home is here right behind us. Um, and they, they often travel with me if I go some places. So we work together when um, I was, for instance, out in the country or, or even trolls need help, mm. they go with me too to settle things, or to other countries. You've gotten to other countries to settle things? Yeah, like uh, I've been twice to, to New York to talk with the beings in Central Park. Mm. So there, yeah. Can you tell me what was happening with those beings there? Well, in Central Park it was a rather special thing because the, the beings there had very long time ago closed down uh, between their worlds because they wanted privacy but now it's time to open up again between the worlds so they are coming more and more out into this world so there were we had workshops there and uh, people are continuing the work of opening up between the, the worlds there it was very exciting <laughs> I, I'm not much for big cities. I think Reykjavik is too big for me. <laughs> yeah, Reykjavik's too big. <laughs> so but now I'm going to New York was yeah. like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, talk about overwhelming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I was in a good area there and I woke up uh, in the mornings with birds singing outside the window and mm. the cats sleeping on my bed, so it was it was cozy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, going out there, it's a uh, very overwhelming city. But the park, I think the park keeps the humans alive there. Yeah. And part of all the changes that are going on in the world today is uh, opening up between the worlds in exactly that park. In exactly that park? That park, Central Park. What do you mean? Because opening up between the worlds is a... Uh, it's a... Uh, major thing that is slowly happening all over the world and uh, yeah things are changing I think we're on this planet or maybe in our darkest hour before sunrise so you're optimistic about the future yes I am it, it is important um, if you look at the news today it's terrible all you see is just terrible news all over but you have to read the, the little articles the hear the news about the people who are everywhere going into the the toughest circumstances to help uh, and make things better yeah and um, that's what will turn things around in the world I think and we all need to participate in that. Yeah. Everyone has their own little task and we just need to focus on that, be better ourselves, be a better me. <laughs>
today than yesterday. Everyone on the planet has a, a you could say, a, a role, a talent or um, something that they decided to do in this life before they were born. Of course, there are uh, accidents and some people choose maybe to do something other than they had planned to do. But if most of us try to do what we have the talent to do, try to do what we were born here to do, as far as we can remember, <laughs> uh, things will go well. The more I look at nature, the more I study uh, nature, I think there is only one life. So it's not like dying or being born again. We are all part of the same life. The plants, the rocks, the wind, the cat over there. <laughs> and you and I, I mean, we are all part of the same life. The same life, right? Yeah. Yes, I think so. If one of us hurts, we we all hurt. And we can see that in the, the world today. But then we have to learn to look at the the positive news to to make us feel better. If we can feel better ourselves and send that thought out, we can make help other people and other uh, parts of life feel better too.